Look at my cameras. We did get some snow last night, but it was only about an inch and a half, two inches. And we're supposed to get a lot more tonight into tomorrow, all tomorrow being Friday. And then it's supposed to uh, accumulate quite a bit, up to eight inches. So do you go plow or don't you go plow? Here's the deal. I figure I'm going to start doing a couple little segments in between the regular videos that I do and I'm going to answer the most commonly asked questions. I try to answer them as best that I can in the videos uh, to make sure everybody gets answered but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of questions that get asked repeatedly. So I'm going to do little segments in between maybe one day a week, maybe two, who knows. But it just depends on the amount of questions and the repetitiveness of those questions. So um, snow plowing, I get asked so much about snow plowing. So we're going to break it down real quick for you. Um, I used to plow at two inches. That was the standard for a long time in my area. Two inches was the trigger point. Um, over the years, a lot of people have gone to three inches for residential and a lot of commercials, those vary. It depends on what they want and what they're demanding of you. A lot of uh, commercial lots are what they call zero tolerance. And that just means for those of you that don't know, even if you get a quarter of an inch of snow, they still have to be you know, either scraped down and then salted or at least salted. They need to be clear. So zero tolerance means just that. Um, I don't have that anymore. I have one small lot, it's an employee lot only, and they want it at three inches. They prefer it to be like four or five inches before I plow it, but I told them three inches. I don't, I don't go any more than that just because of the risk. So 90% of what I do is residential. I have 52 driveways. Now one of them's more than, I think I have like three or four that are about six or seven miles from my house, but 90% of them are within three miles of my house. So. I can roughly get through my entire list on a good snowfall about three and a half hours. Um, it just depends on the roads in my area and how long it takes me to get from one to the next. I go through three different townships. Some of them are really, really good about clearing the roads. A lot of it is state highways, so the state guys are really good about it. But there are some townships that don't plow where the crap and when they do, they don't salt where the crap. So it takes a little longer to get to them. So that determines the length of getting to everything. So my trigger, as many of you know, is three inches. I don't go out and plow anything till three inches. That being said, I give all of my customers at the beginning of every year, I don't automatically put them on the same thing. I ask them all at the beginning of every snow season, usually early fall, do you want plow service again this year? And which way do you want to go? I offer two ways, a per plow price, where I invoice at the end of the month for however many times I was there, or a seasonal rate for unlimited plows. We do not go by the inch around here. It is unlimited plows regardless of what the inch is, how, how many inches have fallen, um, and across the board it is still three inches no matter which way you go. That's my trigger. I do not go and plow until it drops three inches. That being said, I let them know that you know, they know the way that I do it is I plow with the storm. So as soon as it drops three inches, I go out and start plowing. If by the time I get done with my entire route, it has dropped another three inches, I start back at the beginning again. So that's why that inches doesn't really matter much to me. A lot of people have asked me, well, is it unlimited plows up to four inches or up to five inches and then it goes up? None of that matters because I plow with the storm. Um, so that being said, the ways I break down the amount of um, the rates, what the rates are gonna be. When I offer seasonal from limited plows, I take what I would charge per plow on that driveway and I multiply it times 25. That's normally what it is in my area. We get anywhere from 15 to 22, 25 plows. We've had some winters where it's 30 plows roughly, but that's a really heavy winter for us. Um, this year so far I've been out like four times so the way I explain that to my customers is you know when you go with the seasonal rate one of us is getting screwed it never evens out so either it's not going to snow very much like this year and I'm going to make out very well or it's going to snow a lot non-stop and you're going to make out very well so it can go either way I also tell them that if you do the per plow price where I invoice at the end of every month 
then if it's a snowstorm like I just explained where I go out after three inches and by the time I'm done with my route it's dropped another three inches and I have to come through again you are going to be charged for two plows in that same storm it's not just a one-time deal for that storm and that's it you are going to get charged for each time I'm there it doesn't matter from there one time or three times in that same storm in say a 24-hour period you're getting charged for every single one of those times so I make it very clear to my customers and I've had a lot of people comment and say, isn't that kind of like screwing your customers over? It's not. And the reason it's not is because one, I'm getting paid for the work that I'm doing, which is fair. And two, I make it very clear to them. I don't just surprise them and say, this is your per plow price and then plow it two or three times in the storm if it warrants that many times. And then just hit them with a surprise bill. They know ahead of time, they know in advance, and I let them pick what they want to do. So that clarifies any of the billing issues. That's the two ways that I offer it. And like I said, I leave it up to my customers. So they get to pick uh, what they want it to be and which way that they want to go. I have over the years experienced when we get like a two inch snowstorm like we got last night, um, you'll never have the customers that pay per plow call you and say, why didn't you come and plow? Because they want at least three inches because they don't want to pay if they don't have to. So they want at least that three inches. The only ones that will ever call are the ones that pay for the season in advance and they think that, oh, we got two inches, you should still come and plow anyway. Over the years, I've weeded 90% of them out. I really don't have any of them. It's very rare that I ever get one of my customers calling me asking me where I'm at. I'm very punctual. I'm very, I'm on time. I'm always there and I never ever leave my customers hanging. And I've built that reputation up with them and I maintain that. I make sure that I do no matter what. So they trust me. They know I'm going to take care of it if it meets the criteria, which is at three inch. Um, so that helps me out um, without having to deal with customers calling me all the time. I never take on more than I can handle for a number of reasons. I've explained this to you guys um, on an equipment basis. I never take on more than I can handle. That way I'm not constantly rushing to get through them all or to get them all done in time. So I can go through my route and I'm, I'm quick. I'm very efficient at it and um, I'm very... Um, I'm very quick at it, I guess you could say, and I make sure that I get to everybody on time. Like I said, I know how long it takes me to get through my route, so if we get snow overnight, which is nine times out of ten, where you're getting the bulk of your snowstorms, I know what time I have to go out in the morning to get all of them done before people get up and leave for work or church or wherever they're going. So I have that down to a T, and they know that nine times out of ten when they wake up, as long as it's snowed that much before, like I leave at four in the morning usually. So as long as it's dropped three inches by four o'clock, they know nine times out of ten they're going to wake up in the morning and their driveway is already going to be cleared. And they never, most of them don't even know I'm there um, or that I was there. So I don't take on more than I can handle that way I don't have to beat on my equipment and rush to get from one to the next the other reason I don't take on more than I can handle is because I don't need to plow snow there is not I'm never in a predicament where I have to plow snow okay I pack away enough money in the summertime that I can get through the winter and not have to rely on that income now I plow snow because I'm way too active, I'm way too motivated, and I cannot sit around all winter. It drives me crazy. This year has been rough on me because I've had, uh, I haven't been plowing barely at all. I think I've been out four times this year, so I've gotten all this maintenance done on all this equipment that you guys have seen way earlier than I normally would uh, before the next season is starting up for lawn care. So that being said, I don't have to take on so much that I need that income. It's more something for me to do and the income is a bonus. A lot of people have said to me, I bought a plow, I bought this, I bought that, and I haven't made any money, my bank accounts are getting low. I learned my first year to not rely on snow plowing as part of my annual income. If you're a huge company, you're doing a lot of commercial stuff, a lot of contract stuff, and you're in areas that you know are getting pounded with snow every year, then yeah, you can do that. But in areas like mine where it can be give or take, um, it can go either way. Relying on snow plowing as part of your annual income is a big mistake and it's a quick way to put yourself out of business or to give yourself a bad name. So it's not something I recommend doing. But that's it. That's me breaking it down for you guys. That's just the basics of it on the most common things that I get asked. And nothing says you have to do it our way or to pick up my models in the way that I do it. I'm just giving you examples and telling you how I do it and you can make up your mind from there. I'll see you guys in the next one.